Welcome back to Cigar Time. Glad you could join us. Today's show is brought to you by General Cigar, the manufacturers of some of your most iconic, favorite cigars out there. And the letter O. And the letter O. And the letter I. <laughs> Such as Macanudo, Partagas, Cohiba, La Gloria Cubana. Who am I missing? CAO. CAO, thank you. Son Hill. Who? Dunhill. Excalibur. Dunhill. Boulevard. And. Clobber. And. Punch. Sam Lucia. Ooh, Punch. Well, let's not forget Sam Lucia. Toronio. 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 I think that's enough. Yeah, a lot of them. They got a lot of them. They have yeah. a lot, lot, lot. Some other stuff, too. But well, today we're going to be featuring La Gloria Cabana. I love And later Cabana. on, we're going to have an interview with one of, their, <laughs> one of their top executives. That's if Tia can somehow hold it together. Or you can say his name. I can say his name later. Okay. It's just. Secret surprise. Okay. The cigar we'll be smoking today is the lovely Miss T will tell us all about it. Oh. Oh. Uh, hi, Uncle Max, by the way. Oh, hi, Max. Is that the name of the cigar? <laughs> I just want to say hi, Besides Uncle the Max. Besides the interview with Michael Giannini, we're going to have a segment on <laughs> pairings Yay. with Uncle Max. Yeah, he only did that so, to prove he could do the name. The first cigar, or the only cigar, is the Ligori Cubana Esteli R, the series R. I love this one. It's their Esteli R series. The wrapper, binder, and filler are all what, guys? Nicaraguan? Tobacco. Pure. Uh, we haven't done that in so long. Leave me hanging. Maybe there was a reason. That's right. I'm going to leave you guys hanging. Sizes, 6x54. Six 6x60 six and a 6 and a quarter by 64 So that's a little bit bigger than a gourd, though. The taste profile is some pepper, earth, coffee, cedar, and spice. And everything nice. Mm, that's not me. This is one of my favorite cigars, by the way. Just so everybody knows that. Thank you for sharing that. It is. Now, some it's of from all three points of... Um, some of you may notice I'm wearing my hat today. Make up your mind. Well, here's the problem. Two weeks ago, when I did not wear the hat, and I told people to vote on it. Uh, we got many thousands of responses, and it was almost evenly divided between hat and no hat. There were a few that said no head, but we kind of discarded those. So I'm going to wear the hat for a couple of shows, and then maybe I won't wear it for a couple of shows, because I know this is a such a real cliffhanger. It's a real, not only a cliffhanger, but I know it's rather controversial. Well, I think they said they want the hat because they don't have too much glare. On the TV. I uh, can imagine that. Yeah. Well, we can play on the doll show. Doing it's not, like, not like old Baldy down there. But or could we try doing a few episodes where we have the hat, but not you? Uh, we could do that. We could put a body double. Oh, I'll grab it down. Where's your black hat? Uh, my black hat will, will be rejoining us shortly. <laughs> Somebody's in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody's in trouble. I was the dummy at the muscle restaurant. Anyhow. Uh, <laughs> Just about all the, well, I'm sure every single uh, is available at uh, not only our fine 10 stores, but we all, as we always do, we implore you to support your local brick and mortar dealer. And uh, now that the weather's great, maybe you don't need to hang out at the lounges all day long like some people do, but at least, provide, the lounges. At least provides a place for you to enjoy your smoke. And, you know, lots of lounges have big screen TVs and pool tables and Card tables, etc., etc. Et Golf games. A lot of etc. Golf, Golf, Golf games. Golf games. We have that, yeah. Dominoes. And uh, that's about it for me. I'm done. Thanks for coming yeah. in. Yeah. Appreciate it. Leave your hat. You know, I don't know why people like smoking the bigger ring gauges. Because this is just. It's a not, fad. This is enough. Like, I like, oh, you know, trying to. It's ridiculous. Imagine it's if we actually hot. had a big one. How's it go? This is only a 54, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What ring gauge is this? This is a 54. This is the 54? <laughs> it feels yeah. fatter than a 54. It does feel yeah. bigger than a 54. It's a beefy 54. It's a beefy 54. It's a beefy. It's, beefy. Yeah. it's, it's definitely 54. not a beefy 54. It's not an under over. Over I'll under. Yeah. Over under. Unger. Mm. Unger over. Mine delaminated. Did it? Wow. It's laminated? It delaminated. Please don't talk about lamination. Oh, God. What well, do you want to talk about? Let's, Cigars. Let's, uh, how about if we talk about. Let's get. Let's talk about something really novel. Cigars. Mm. Let's get everybody's first impression. To you? I'll go first. First impression. I'm not getting any of the pepper yet. That's fine with that's fine with me. Um, it's very smooth and mellow right now. I mean I it barely lit, so that 
That's all I have to say right now. I'm barely lit. Wow. I'm barely lit. <laughs> okay. No, you sound like you're pretty well lit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take your word. You're barely something. I was under Max's table. Never mind. Forget it. <sighs> so you, you were under his you. table. No, forget it. Thank you. Forget it. Rob, go ahead. You're barely something, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm getting the earth. I'm getting a, a hint of the coffee. A uh, little bit of sweetness because of the, the wrapper. Uh, but that's it right now. Yeah. I agree with Rob. <laughs> That's your first problem. Sweet. I'm getting. I'm getting sweet. I agree with Taya, and I'm not getting very much pepper. And I agree with Rob, and it's earthy. Wow. You're like a bandwagon follower. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Uncle Max. Uncle Max finds the cigar finds the earthiness in the cigar with underlying spice, and it's suiting my palate right now. Nice. Where the heck did you go? Underlying. Underlying. <laughs> Ooh. You know, it's about time. Don't it's get a, jealous. It's about Don't time that sophistication came back to this panel. It's because you're wearing your hat. I'm wearing my hat. And he's wearing the tie. rest of the whole company. Sophistication. Are you trying to say we ain't sophisticated? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bo. It's about time. It's about time. Max is trying That's to make what I'm talking about. All right. Well, Go I got to tell you, I taste cocoa. <laughs> yeah. I don't get a lot of spice. I don't. Get pepper. Is that Chanel? No, it's just cocoa. Oh, okay. Which isn't oh, a bad thing. God. Oh my god. I didn't know Mike was here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love the cigar. This is one of my favorites. Yeah, I think it's one of the best LaGloria's ever. It is. It's a relatively new cigar. Three, four years now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't okay. even think that. I think no, it's two I think years. Two years. Two, two years. Two and a half years. Great started. cigar. Great but we'll have it's more. actually cheaper than the other Lagorias. On the really? series, yes, ours, it yeah. is. Wow. And yeah. I think it's better. This this is the uh, this fifty four, like we said, mm -hmm. it's uh, six fifty. Yep. Wow, so, that's a great. And even the big one, the um, the sixty four, six and a half by sixty four, is only like seven fifty. Mm -hmm. So they're actually priced really well. Yep. Well, so. before we cut away to our interview, I'd like to uh, have Paul, who's our resident horticulturist. Well, did you want me to talk about it, some things from the fields, or should I just mention our little field? Well, you can do a little from the fields. From I'll, the fields. I'll like, kick you under the table when I want you to stop. Well, I thought I would take us off to the land of 27,000 islands, mm -hmm. from which comes a lot of tobacco, by the way. Better known, thank you, Uncle Max. Oh, Better so known as in Uncle Max is here. Indonesia. Better known as Indonesia. SPM. And uh, actually... Tobacco has been grown uh, on a relatively commercial scale in Indonesia since the 1600s. Uh, but it became a real business, not surprisingly, under the guidance of the Dutch in about, Dutch. Eight, in about 1860. That's practically French. Who does he like? <laughs> They're when, big time tobacco people, the Dutch. Yeah, they run all over I the world with they seeds from, from all <laughs> over the place. And a guy named... Nienhaus. <laughs> my Dutch pronunciation Bless is you. not really up to snuff. In uh, 1863, he went there to buy some tobacco, and he was not really very happy with what was available. So he decided to set up plantations and curing barns and build a whole industry from scratch. Um, and he had a great deal of success. In fact, he had a tremendous amount of success, and Dutch rappers... Uh, which is what they were called back then, Dutch rappers, became very, very popular everywhere except in the United oh, States. They sense. were popular elsewhere in the world. Until the very late 1800s, when an interesting thing happened. Uh, the United States government decided to double the import tariff on wrapper tobacco. Mm. But only on wrapper tobacco. They didn't increase the tariff on binder or filler from anywhere. So being Dutch, uh, Ninehouse decided to reclassify all of his tobacco from Indonesia as filler. And all of a sudden, his wrapper became the cheapest wrapper in America <laughs> by a very, very wide margin. Uh, to give you an idea, even though this was only the 1800s, uh, the... Uh, the uh, tax or the, the, the tariff 
on wrapper back then was a dollar a pound for right. wrapper tobacco. Really? That's a lot. All the way back then. That was a yeah, lot. that's a lot of money. Yeah. So uh, avoiding that really gave him a huge leg up. And that, and you might remember we talked about this on an earlier episode. That was what prompted the folks in Connecticut to try to come up with a way to compete uh, with the uh, Indonesian wrapper and come up with another way to grow tobacco that was kind of like that. It wasn't really because everybody loved Indonesian tobacco so much, they, but the manufacturers all loved the price. Uh, so everybody had to like it because that's what was there. Uh, there are basically just a few types of Indonesian tobacco on the market today. Uh, the basic tobacco is called Basuki, and it's just it's just your basic Indonesian tobacco. There's something called TBN. Uh, TBN is uh, based on the Dutch words that mean shade-grown tobacco, amazingly enough. When they say shade-grown, they don't mean like the way they do it in Connecticut. Uh, in Indonesia, the rainy season is so rainy that they put shades over the little baby plants just to keep them from washing away. Wow. Um, but that's what they call it. They call it shade grown. There's also a, 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 what they call an early harvest tobacco, which is the dry season, uh, so they don't have to put the little shades over it, so that's actually a sun-grown tobacco. And there's uh, something called VBN, uh, which is grown on, it's only from Java, and it's a, it's a particular uh, breed. What I think is really sort of funny and ironic is that the most popular tobacco from Indonesia is this TBN, and you've seen it in mm. companies like General Cigar, as a yeah. matter of fact, and, and El Tadis use a lot of it. Um, but that tobacco, as it's used today, is a crossbreed between that basuki, which is the basic Indonesian tobacco, and Connecticut shade. Wow. So what they decided to do is take their original tobacco and the tobacco that America developed to compete with their original tobacco and crossbreed them. And that became the premier Indonesian tobacco. Cool. Interesting. I thought it was kind of cool. Don't we have some uh, a month-long event with General this Absolutely, month? Absolutely, yes. Um, any of the General products, which we, we named earlier, you buy any brand. three. Buy any three through the whole month of June. We'll give you either a free CAO Columbia or one of these, the Series R Esteli, and that's the whole month. Buy three, get one. Cool. Nice. Great. Nice. I think at this time we'll cut away for our interview with Michael Giannini. And uh, we'll be right back. Hi, we're here with Michael Giannini. He's the uh, creative director of General Cigars. He be he's behind one of the, well, a couple of the most famous brands that you guys know from General, Lagoria Cubana and Foundry. So welcome. Nice to meet Thank you. Thank you, Tia. It's been a pleasure. Yes, it's an honor. Love well, your well, style. Oh, my God. This is so Thank cool you. to be yeah. sitting next to this guy. So wow. um, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, Absolutely. So, But first of all, I want to say it's great mm -hmm. to be back in my hometown, born and raised in Philly. Arthur and I, we go <laughs> way back. I mean, long time. Long time. 25 long. years. Yeah, and, something uh, like that. Do we man. have pictures? No. <laughs> <laughs> we probably do. But it's cool to be back. Um, it's my first time here. Yeah. Actually doing this. I actually I was telling Arthur during the before we started that I actually saw this show a year ago and I was at my mom's house in Philly Woo! and I was like, Wow, this is cool and here I am a year later on the show. So thank oh, you. It's great to be you. back with old friends. Good to see you, my Good friend. Good to now see you, you know too. you've really arrived. 23 years in the business, but now you, you're somebody important. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I'm still not. I'm just one, I'm just a guy that does what he loves to do and I get to work with great people yeah. and you're That's part of that blessed, group. Yeah. So I'm really blessed. So, you know, I am the creative director. I have a lot of titles, so I'll just kind of go through them very quickly. I'm the creative director for General Cigar. So no, I it's get only a half hour show. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I work in all the brands behind the scenes, uh, Macanudo Partagas, uh, oh. La Boya Cabana, um, Hoya de Monterey, Punch, et cetera. I work with our brand teams, bringing that stuff to life. I'm also the head of innovations, so I work on all the blends as well. So I work in three of our factories, Dominican, Honduras, Nicaragua, and I work with a, a group of elite masters there, five of us basically work on the blends. 
And then I'm the head of La Gloria Cabana, so I work on all that. That's my baby. And then the other one is my other baby is Foundry, which is uh, where I get to be super creative and do some very unique things. Yeah, and the names definitely show that you're super creative with the Foundry oh, line. Oh, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. The thing about the Foundry line is I get to use some really bizarre, exotic, never used tobaccos. So I get to make a lot of small batches, very unique things that have been sitting in our warehouse that nobody ever had to use for. So I get to put that together, and that's what the Foundry brand is. Yeah. That's fun. So actually, so with all that, you know, what I get to do is I get to have a blast. I get to start the project <laughs> from the beginning, and I actually get to see it all the way through. And then I actually get to go out in the marketplace and see you wonderful people get to smoke the product. So wow. and you, and you even get paid for it, right? And I get paid, yeah. But, you know, they don't have to pay me, but don't tell anybody I won't. that. <laughs> Well, 30,000 so people now know your secret. Yes. More than 30. So, uh, saying all that, I mean, so this is my 34th year. September will be my 35th year in the industry. I'm still oh, a young wow. guy. And uh, it's cool to be able to uh, to find a passion at a very young age. And I, and I actually, my, my, my story is, if you guys want to hear uh -huh. this, my story is born and raised in Philly, first generation Italian-American. My family um, actually thought they would bring the... Italy to a, a row home in Alani is where I grew up and we had one of the biggest plots and so we had a vineyard, two fig trees, a cherry tree and in the back we'd have all the greens that my parents would grow. <laughs> so two things we could never have in the house, anything frozen or anything in a can. So <laughs> everything was nice. fresh. Good for them. And there's a reason why I tell you this is because by the time I was 18 years old I ended up becoming a chef. And because I was an immigrant, my family said, hey, you got to go to school because this is the American dream. You That's need to get right. to college. You need to get a degree. So at that point, I figured, man, I wanted to get a PhD in psychology. It fascinated me. I started wow. in business, to you. We were talking yeah. about it. And it wasn't my forte. And so yeah, my psychology. Yeah, we're accounting. <laughs> <laughs> but we can add. Yeah, we can add. <laughs> so... You know, two things I thought I needed to have. One was a tweed coat, which was easy. The second thing was a pipe. So I actually would go to a local smoke shop and buy a pipe. Ended up becoming a clerk behind the counter. And um, from there, ended up uh, buying a store together and, and in the Philly market. And then also ended up, ended up being an independent manufacturer's rep. Yeah. And I guess about 15 years ago, I finally realized I was blessed. And I was 20 years into the gig. And I'm like, wow. You know, I found my calling where I never never knew what I wanted truly to do, and this was my calling. I had no idea I was going to ever be in the cigar in business, and no sense of anybody that I knew smoked cigars. Wow. And so now I get to do all this fun stuff. So. And you started from the bottom. That's, from the that's bottom. Amazing. And, and now you're here. No, yeah, I, I'm here. <laughs> I, I remember when he here. used to roll in his yeah. little <laughs> his little rolling cart with all during the boom. All these wonderful, quote unquote, <laughs> cigars and accessories that he had. And even back then, he was the best dressed man in the industry. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, this man, I wish I made in a year what he spends on his wardrobe. <laughs> the great things in life never change. Uh, he's always, very true. always been a very sharp dresser. Thank you. I mean, I'm impressed. I used to, I used to wear a suit and tie all the time in my former corporate days, but he put me to shame. <laughs> it must be very interesting because you've come in contact with some of the legends in the industry, some who are still with us, some who are retired or not with us anymore, and, and you've got like a foot at each side of the business. Yes. Before the boom, during the boom, and after That's the so boom, cool. and now with the approaching uh, opening up of Cuba, uh, I think down the pike we'll see a few cigars, but not a flood. They just can't make enough cigars. Right. Yeah. And they can't make enough quality cigars, which is the problem. I'll be honest, I like Nicaragua. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you know, I remember back in the early 70s, before the Sandinistas took over, the Nicaraguan tobacco that was coming out, the cigars that were coming out in Nicaragua back then, yep. were, were overtaking Cuba for, from a quality standpoint. But few people remember that now. But, but I'm glad to see the resurgence, and I'm glad to see General having a foot in the Nicaraguan Absolutely. side, so, so that's impressive. Uh, Paul, you're our field guy. Here's, here's. Well, I have an interesting question for you, and that's, you work in, in Nicaragua, Honduras, and the Dominican Republic, and in terms of your personal palate, which of the tobaccos from those countries do you enjoy yeah, the most? Great question. Question. That's a really tough question. <laughs> you know, I, I, the only way I can answer this is the blends I'm working on now with my team. Uh, because, you know, 
what's, what's unique about this, you know, when I would blend just for La Gloria with my team, we had a specific signature taste. Now that I get to work on all the brands within General Cigar, you got to put on your hat of here's the identity for this specific brand, and that's what you got to blend. We got to stop it right there. Can you join us next week? Absolutely. Great. And we want to thank Michael for appearing, and bye bye. Thanks, Mike. Michael, that was very informative. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, nice outfit. <laughs> nice outfit. <laughs> he is a dresser. <laughs> he does know how to dress. All right, I think it's time for a further review on our cigar before we get to Uncle Max. Uh, can we do well, that? Or do we want to go to yeah, Uncle Max? Yeah, can Mac? we go Uncle Max first? Let's go to Uncle Max. Okay. Hi, guys. Well, one thing I will say about the cigar, I'll wrap both in one. It holds an ash very well, as you can all see. It's been uh, nice and sturdy and very gently removed the head. Now, as far as cigar pairings and alcohol for this particular cigar, my suggestion for a beer uh, would be one of the heavier, darker beers. Uh, I like stouts with this. I like porters. Uh, and even uh, a Scottish ale uh, can really uh, bring out the flavors. In a, uh, in a scotch, my suggestion is a very heavy, uh, highly scotch, something like a Lagavulin or Laphroaig. Uh, for a bourbon, uh, my suggestion is uh, something like a Woodhouse. Uh, or even uh, the Booker, also very nice. Mm. Uh, a heavy dark rum would go very good with this kind of cigar, something like a Myers. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. But there's uh, so many things to uh, to pair a, a heavy cigar like this with that uh, you can have a lot of fun experimenting. What would you What would you recommend among the carbonated beverage section? Oh, I definitely would recommend a Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I'm drinking club soda, and that's very good. Personally, Diet Coke. So not Mr. Pibb? No. Oh, uh, All right, and now... There go those sponsors. Now, yeah, we'll, I know. now we'll get on with our uh, review of the cigar. I'm surprised this is all Nicaraguan. It doesn't... To Another me, bite it's, a, it's, a, right. it's a good cigar, it's but... It's a lot it, smoother. It's smoother, and it doesn't... It does, doesn't From off taste... Point. It just doesn't taste like your prototypical Nicaraguan. Right. It, it's sweet and earthy, and I am getting some some uh, coffee flavors, but it just, I don't know, it just doesn't remind me of something Nicaraguan for some reason. Well, like that heavy, which I don't, because I, I like this better, actually. I don't like the heavy, heavy Nicaraguan. Eh. I don't think there's much, even though it's called the it's Esteli, silly. it's not. I don't think there's much it's Esteli tobacco in it. It's more Hanapa and Condega in this than it is Esteli. Yeah, I think it's mostly Condega. Which is why Kondega. I love it, yes. Condega, you like Condega? Yes, I do. Because Condega tends to be a little milder and a little sweeter. Sweeter, yeah. And unlike the original series are, this was specifically blended to be a lot more complex and, ha and a lot less in your face. Yes. Yeah. It's the they did a good job of that. Yeah, they really did. Yes, they job. did. See? Yeah, this is my one of my favorite cigars. I always point people in this direction. Like I said earlier, it's from all three points. Well, it's from three points of Nicaragua. So you got Esteli, you have the Jalapa, and the Condega. And like Paul said, that's what makes it sweet, more sweeter, which is the Condega. I'm getting a lot of that cocoa that you got. A lot of it. Um, especially in the retro health, it's really nice. And um, not a lot of spice. I don't think I'm getting pepper or spice at all. No. I don't even not taste it at all. I agree. And no. from the previous show, how we learned about the different points, it's right in the front, right at the tip yep. with the sweetness. So Rob? I enjoy it. No, I have Good. to agree. This, uh, this cigar is, first of all, it's one of my favorite cigars. I don't like the... Uh, I should say I don't like it, but it's a good cigar. The regular Series R line, but the Esteli is, I think, much better, and like I said earlier, a lot cheaper. Um, I'm getting the coffee notes. I'm getting a hint of cedar uh, a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of spice and a lot of earth. Um, I really enjoy the Retro Hale with this cigar. You get a lot of, a lot of that coffee taste through the Retro yeah. Hale. So. Well, I tend to concur with the majority of what the panelists have said. It's a very fine cigar, and, and 
what did you say the price point was? Six six fifty or seven fifty. Wow, that is the sweetest of the sweet. That's, that's a home run, right? Yeah, that's this a definite awesome. home run. Well, I guess uh, wouldn't take much to give it a number now, Scott. Why don't you leave off? I'll go with an eight point five. Oh, okay. I'll go with Uncle eight. 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 Wow. He's Paul? tough. He's tough. He is tough. I'll go with an 8.5 also, as much as I hate to agree with Scott about it. Go with an 8.51. No, it's an 8.5. Wow. G? I'm going 9.5. Oh, Good for you. No, because this Dang, is just, it's it. delicious. This is, you guys know this is right on my palate, my, my flavor profile, so. Just like Gotta in go. the chocolate. Rob? I love some chocolate. Yeah, I, I disagree with the right side of the palate. Yeah. The correct you know. side, you mean? No, the wrong side. Uh, I have to give this a 9. Yeah, 9. Definitely a 9. <laughs> Because of the price, also. Well, I'm going to sort of middle it all out on the left side of the panel. I give it a 925. It's an excellent cigar. The price counts for a lot of points with me. Uh, this is a smoke for anybody. Yes. It's not going to blow you out of the water with right. a whole lot of spice and pepper and, 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 yeah. and strength. Is anybody getting any spice at all? I'm not getting any spice. It's, it's, yeah, no. a little bit, a little bit. Like, 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 like a tea, like just like a like a spray, like, like a cedar yeah. taste. But that's yeah. that's the closest I get to a spice. Yeah. And I think the, the more they're out, the better they get. I mean, it's just to me. I think if you're looking to start smoking Nicaraguan tobacco, it's I would great. start with something like yeah, this great before you jump into something fuller great body like a spot. like a Padron or something like that. Yeah. Um, well, Paul, if I would you, do that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay. Paul, do you want to give us a very brief uh, update on your horticultural we can project? We can save it till next time oh, if you, you want. Oh, uh, you have a little time, it. yeah. Well, you might remember that a couple of weeks ago, actually it's three weeks ago, we uh, started a few seeds and we're, we're hoping to grow some tobacco. Horsham uh, grown. This is going to be our, our Horsham shade tobacco. Um, and I will tell you, Although it got off to a slow start, we are starting to see some signs of life. I feel like Dr. Frankenstein. It's alive! It's alive! Um, kind of look like him, too. Um, it's very early going, of course, and the next few weeks... Oh, the green stuff is the tobacco. <laughs> Hopefully. Is that um, in the in the next few weeks, we should start to see some real activity out of this. It's really just getting going. This is going to be like Jack and the Beanstalk. It's going to go through yeah, the ceiling. Gonna, well, actually, uh, within the next ninety days, it should be yeah real, five or six feet tall. Yeah, real plants. Yeah. It's going to outgrow this thing in a hurry. The amazing thing: our half hours go by so fast. I mean, you know, we're right right up against the clock, and yeah. It's almost, you, you can linger a little and say goodbye. We don't have to rush through it for a change. So. All right. Life's too short oh, oh, to yeah. smoke cheap cigars. Okay, Max. Hi, Mom. Have a good evening. What? what? No, 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 no Ciao for now, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.